it became very popular a few years back to call them cancer stem cells. But I think people have come to appreciate that there are long-term self-renewal cells in cancer that have some stem cell characteristics, whether they really come directly from a stem cell or whether they have redeveloped stem cell-like properties is really the current question and a focus for a lot of research. Long-term self-renewal cells in tumors are not normal. They have acquired the property of being immortal and their relationships to normal stem cells is the focus of investigation. Certainly they have many properties thereof. They can even in the most aggressive tumors resemble embryonic stem cells in their gene expression patterns and some of their properties. Uh, but they are by definition abnormal cells. Well, there may be parallelisms within those tracks. Like I said, if, if, if a cell being induced to go backwards has to recapitulate its epigenetics in a reverse order, take all the steps that it got going forward to get there and now say, okay, go and reproduce those in the opposite direction, uh, it would be naive to believe without studying it that every one of those steps would be performed correctly. And what cancer teaches us in a self-renewing system that's its risk for cancer is that if a cell is asked to divide more times than it usually would to go from a most immature to a mature cell, you're giving time for errors. Nuanced errors, but if they get imposed, can change the, the, the stripes of that cell, if you will, going forward. And so I, I think that we just need to ask those questions and, and, and stratify what actually is going on. But yes, I think there is the potential to make cancer-related mistakes going backwards. And then that means that that cell will expand in a way that has tumor risk properties. And that's what I think we need to monitor. And in turn, for us as cancer biologists, can we learn something about the mistakes we know make cancer cells are making? and allow us to manipulate those in a therapeutic way to, to have an, an anti-cancer strategy. So I see them going back and forth, learning from one another. We know cancer is a genetic disease. It's driven by mutations. But there are epigenetic changes in cancer. And it may be that some of the epigenetic changes that allow a cell to expand in an early or stem cell or progenitor state allows it to survive the mutations Then they work in together. If the epigenetic terrain was taken out from underneath that mutation, that cell may not be able to tolerate the mutation as an oncogenic event. It may, be, it may die or senesce, and uh, this is the hope for reversing these epigenetic therapies. One of the things that we're working very hard to determine now, the drugs that do reverse the epigenetic changes that we have hopes for therapeutically, don't know if all their therapeutic effects will be purely epigenetic, but one major question is, do they work because they can block stem-like or progenitor-like cells and take them away from the population of cancer cells. And a lot of people believe that's become a holy grail. If you can take the long-term self-renewing cells away from the cancer, that's your best chance for long-term cure. And then you think about disease from an epigenetic standpoint is how many steps along the way could you induce an abnormality? You say to those genes, wow, I just silenced you and you ought to come on at the next step, but you, but you don't. So that cell may remain immature, it may not take that step, and then if you get chronic inflammation around that cell, then you're going to expand a population of cells that doesn't quite know how to grow up, doesn't know where to go. So it keeps growing that way and a mutation comes in and now it really knows how to go somewhere in a sinister way. And that's kind of the way the dance goes.